Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall with Simpler Trading doing the nightly market update for Wednesday, June the 7th. So happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hope your week is going well, and more importantly, hope your trading is going well. Um, it has been all about the bulls until today. Had a pretty decent little pullback today. I mean, I guess... Uh, this is the ES right here. I guess it's not as bad as it as it looks. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. And then we'll talk about kind of where we've been and where we are going. So with that, let me move this over here. And so this is the ES. I like to focus on the ES because we have overnight data. The light gray is overnight session. The black is the cash or the day session. Uh, so that's yesterday and this is today. So um, we opened up here again on the ES about 4,300, and then we just kind of kind of fell most all day and down into this is our that red line is a voodoo fire line. I'll show you this here in a second. Let's go let's go to a little bit longer time frame. Go to a 10 day chart, and you can see um, how these levels now these levels are these lines are based on. Uh, Elliott wave so that white line is called a snow line we came up there touched that and almost touched it again today uh, the red line is the strongest of all the lines and that's a fire line we came down and touched that and again uh, almost touched that again today so um, the last three or four sessions we've been kind of chopping in this zone which I actually think we will continue to chop in that zone maybe maybe we break out maybe a little to the lower maybe um, ahead of all of the data that we've got coming up next week and we'll talk about that but prior to this now this is a 10 day chart uh, we were down at 4100 so we've gone from 4100 all the way up to 4300 in a very short period of time that's a big big move and put this out on a 20 day chart and you know again you can see um, pretty pretty dramatic move and it's actually been a lot more broad based rally um, you know it started kind of the real uh, move up uh, started with the tech stocks, um, NVIDIA and AI and a couple of the others, um, and kind of got things going. And so things, you know, are looking pretty good, uh, looking pretty, pretty bullish here. But let's look at this on a, I'll put this on a little bit longer time frame and we'll go here. And as you can see, um, our now this is a trailing one year chart right here in the ES the over the past one year the high has been 4327 which is that line right there we're we're pretty close I mean we fill this little gap right here and you know and we're there and from there do we break out and keep going or do we get rejected and come back down and I think we get rejected and come back down and actually probably to this level right here uh, which is roughly the 30, uh, 34 uh, EMA right there. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see. There's a, there's a, there's some big data points next week that are coming out and all that kind of stuff, and that's probably what's going to make that decision for us. In the meantime, we probably, you know, just kind of chop here. Um, but let's look and compare that. So this is the ES. This is the NASDAQ, and you can see a much different chart here with the NASDAQ just from about this point right here, just really taking off higher, 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 straight up. And then we kind of faded back down here today. And, and we were anticipating this, a little exhaustion point. Um, I actually shorted the NASDAQ, I shorted, shorted the Qs today, QQQ. Um, had a really nice trade out of that. But, um, but again, different, different chart, different pattern here. Uh, on the on the Nasdaq, and again, it's bullish, very bullish. But uh, we are getting pretty extreme uh, or over overbought there. And you can, if you look at the individual names, of course, the ones that are driving it, um, you know, the big tech and all that kind of stuff, they're all looking pretty extended too. So we could definitely pull back a little bit. So, but the you know the bigger question is, does this continue higher or lower? And for that we need to go to the calendar and talk about the economic calendar so next week on tuesday we have cpi um, which is going to tell us if inflation is stable or increasing or decreasing that kind of thing that's on tuesday 
Then on Wednesday, we have PPI, producer price index, and we have Fed meeting on Wednesday where the Fed, and they have a press conference. So the Fed is going to tell us if they're going to raise rates or not. And that could be a big, big, big catalyst one way or the other for, a, you know, a continued move higher or, you know, or sideways or down. We've always got three choices, right? Um, I, and I don't know. I, even if I knew what they were going to do, I don't really know how the market's going to react to that. Um, now, we do know there's about a 70% chance priced in of no rate hike. You know, the Fed's going to pause, not do anything. You know, we won't know that until, obviously, after Tuesday morning data, CPI, and Wednesday morning data, PPI, ahead of the Fed meeting Wednesday afternoon. So, you know, that can change, that can go up or down. But right now, the market is expecting no rate uh, no rate hike. So, um, you know, it'll probably be no rate hike, and it'll be non, you know, non-event and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just wondering if, if we've had this much, you know, a, a really nice move here. Um, and the market might be um, ready, you know, a little tired, ready for pullback. Um, the last index I want to look at is the rut here. Um, so you can see the rut is, which is Russell 2000, is is really in its own world. It's just a moonshot here, really, really, really taken off. Um, small cap stocks, etc. And you know, it's kind of again, it's kind of in its own world here. So I don't normally you know, um, put all these in the same category anyway. I, the ES and the NQ kind of trade together. Typically, the NQ leads, the ES follows, and then maybe the rut follows up, you know, lags behind, you know, but but still kind of trends the same way. Um, and they're all trending up, but um, but again, it's really hard to, you know, hard to tell um, at this point. The other thing that you should look at or should know, the VIX, you see this implied volatility? We're at the year low here on the VIX. It's about 13.94, um, very, 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 very low, and that is, you know, typically what we consider the fear index. Uh, so that's showing that there's just no fear in this market. Uh, let me show you here on the SPX, and you can see it's right down here in the in the lowest level in the you know in the past year, not year to day, but trailing you know one year. So very, very, very low place here. Now, typically when that happens. You know, when the VIX gets very low, like here, you know, it's when you have, or I guess it's right there, and you have a flush down, a big spike up in the VIX, right? Um, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it very well could. So be be aware of that and kind of keep an eye on that VIX. Um, so at this point, there's not much to do, but you know we're we're continuing. I've kind of tightened up the reins a little bit on some trades that I've got. I'm doing some range-bound trades. Got an iron condor on, uh, two double calendars. I've got a short actually in the QQQs. I took one off this morning. I got one left, and um, you know again we're just kind of we're we're in holding pattern until next week and we see what happens with the Fed and that could be determined what happens with CPI and PPI just ahead of the Fed. So, you know, be aware of that. Um, other than that, you know, it's just, there's just no way to tell which way we're going to go from here. But with the volatility this low, you know, it is, the market looks like it wants to go higher. Uh, I'm a little suspect of that, but, you know, again, we shall see. Uh, but, um, that's what I've got for you today. Let me mention one other thing. Um, if you need help with your trading or uh, if you're not having the results you want, come and join us, of course, at Simpler. Uh, a lot of great traders here uh, ready to help you. Uh, we actually have a webinar tonight. It's free uh, from Trendy John, and he is a really good trader. Um, I don't, I actually don't follow him as much as close as I should. Uh, I'm going to go to this webinar and kind of check out more of his stuff. I know he's got some really good charting and he's, he's a really good trader. Um, so try to check this out. It's tonight at 7 central and again, it's free. So um, I'll have this link posted at the end of this video. There he is. What a handsome guy, right? Um, but like I said, uh, you should check out this web webinar. It's going to be um, it's going to be very interesting. I'll be there. So, anyway, um, hope that helps. Hope it makes sense. And I will see you guys next week. We will know all the answers next week after the Fed meeting. Next Wednesday is the next time I do a video update. So after the Fed, I will see you guys then. Thanks. Take care. Mm -hmm.
Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 